No, you said that we are more than a conqueror, Father God. And Father God, even if you don't do it, we're going Hallelujah. to still praise you because we know that you have all the power. But for, for these special blessings, we're going to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Somebody amen. say amen. 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 Praise God. We say praise the Lord. You can be seated. We say praise the Lord. Everybody's in the house of God on tonight. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. Praise the Lord. And on tonight, we're going to get right to the word of God. Is that all right? Amen. amen. We've been talking and I've started this new series that God has given us the grace to teach on uh, things that will keep us out of heaven. Amen. Amen. And on last week, praise God, we went to number one. Amen. And number <laughs> one was that uh, is that we're people are we need to be baptized in Jesus' name and receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And we talked in depth about that last week. Amen. We talked about the scripture text that it comes from, and the scripture text that it comes from is John chapter three, where Jesus says, "I say unto you, barely." Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen? So last week we talked about this intensely. We talked about baptism. We talk about receiving the Holy Ghost. We talk about how the Holy Ghost comes. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So that was the first thing. So the first thing is, and this, once we receive the Holy Ghost, amen, now uh, we're, and we've been baptized in his name, we're in the kingdom of God. Amen? We, we have, we, we're now here. Now the Bible kind of shifts and talks about inheriting the kingdom. So what God, what the word of God is dealing with is that we are in the kingdom now. But guess what? We still have a kingdom to obtain to, to be in the presence of Jesus, amen, and of God, praise God, for the remainder of eternity, amen? amen. We, are, we, are, we are saved by grace through faith, none other than what? The gift of God. Yeah. So, yes, we're saved now, but we're, we are saved, and we have been promised to God that when he returns, because the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also raise me and change me. And change this mortal into immortality and make this corruption put on incorruption. Can we say amen? amen? So now you're going to hear us talking about inheriting the kingdom. So so now that we're in the kingdom, praise God, now we have to inherit the rest of the kingdom of what he's saying. So this takes us to number two we have tonight. Praise God. Amen. And that's going to take us, praise God, that the second thing that will keep us out of heaven on our list, amen, in this series comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9 through 11. Amen. And it deals with unrighteousness, unrighteous and being, unrighteousness and being deceived. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to define these two terms, but then we're going to go down what Paul talks about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. About these who will not, if, you, if this is what's happening, uh, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So the key goal tonight is to identify maybe some areas in our life, amen, and some behaviors in our life that we need to expel, amen, so that we, when Christ returns, amen, there be no reason why we cannot go to the prepared place for prepared people, amen, amen. amen. So let's go ahead and get into the word of God. So let's go ahead and read the scriptures. Y'all have it? So I know it's on the screen here. Uh, I know they have it. Amen. We thank God for uh, a, a technology team. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank God we have someone to help us. So let's read these, these three passages of scripture here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Know ye not that they that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers with man, of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetedness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But guess what? That's not the end of the story, church. Let's go ahead and read verse 11. He says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the spirit of our God. Can we say amen? 
So as we look at this list, know, church, that guess what? We can get away from this stuff. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is a way, amen, to get away from the things that are trying, praise God, to keep us bound so that when Christ returns and our ability to inherit the promise of God for us, amen, uh, does happen and nothing that will cause it, amen, in our lives to keep it from happening. Right. Amen. All right. So let's first of all define. So two terms I want to talk about, amen, here in verse number nine, praise God, deals with. Uh, unrighteous and deceived. Amen. So when we talk about unrighteousness and deceived, that's what Paul says. He says, know you not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So what does it mean to be unrighteous? Well, let's take a look at that. To be unrighteous, praise the Lord. Amen. Comes from a word in the Greek, praise God. It means one who violates justice. Amen. The unjust. Mm. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So now uh, we have to define what is justice. All of us got all types of ideas of what words mean, don't we? Mm-hmm. But it's good to look at what the original context of what the word means, and I believe it'll get a better insight on what's going on when Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth. Amen. He says, well, what is the definition of justice? Well, justice, praise God, is the principle or ideal of dealing with a right action. Amen? One who deals with uh, uh, one who does not deal one, well, unrighteous deals with uh, uh, one who does not who deals fraudulently with another. So the first thing we have to understand is that. So we put those together. It talks about one who violates the principles or ideals of things that are right. That's unrighteousness. That's unrighteous. Unrighteous. All right. Now the question I want to ask you is: Is unrighteous uh, when we talk about justice? Who is that influencing? Who is that affecting? It's not affecting God because we can't treat God unjust because God's not going to allow it. Because somewhere has, I have to have some type of, of quality, amen, in order to, to, to file just or justice. So, for example, when you go into a courtroom, you have a judge, right? Amen. The judge sits above everything else, doesn't he? Amen. But the plaintiff and the, and the defendant sit on what? The same level. Right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the plaintiff is, has a relationship with the defendant, and the defendant has a relationship with the plaintiff. But the judge has a relationship with neither. Right. He sits above. So that's why I said no matter... So, so, so when I talk about injustice, it talks about those that I'm in relationship with. <laughs> and the relationship that God is talking about is people's relationship with mankind. So what I'm trying to get us to understand is is that everyone, when Paul's dealing here with these lists here in 1 Corinthians, praise God, he's talking about how you deal with people. Amen. And if you deal with people the wrong way, uh-huh. it'll keep you out of the kingdom of God. Yes, it will. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, according to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Being unjust. All right, let's look at the seed. Y'all ready? Being what does deceive mean? Deceive means what? To be to, to cause to stray, to lead astray, or roam aside from what? The right way. All right. So Paul says that what? The unrighteous shall not what? Inherit the kingdom. When I don't treat my brother, amen. When I don't treat people, when I don't treat persons, when I don't treat the dog right. Uh-oh. Come on. God is saying, praise the Lord, I'm not being just. With that individual or with that situation or with that circumstance, he says, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So my dealings with people have a direct influence on if I'm going to make it to heaven or not. I can't be a brawler on Monday through Friday and then come into church on Sunday, raise my hand, speak in some type of tongue and think I want to make it to heaven. Come on. You're what? Now you're in that area of being deceived. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So unrighteousness and deception, praise God. Amen. Uh, 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 deception feeds on unrighteous and causes it to take place into somebody's life. And what Paul is saying here is, watch this. What Paul is saying, amen, is that, uh, let me get to my notes here. 
He's saying, uh, 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 he's saying, if you're unrighteous, if you're if you're unrighteous, deception is waiting at the door. <laughs> Praise God. And if you walk through that door of, of, of unrighteous and deception, thinking these you you will think, praise God, these other things are okay to do. And if you believe it, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So what Paul is saying, pretty much this is what Jesus said. A little leaven, leaven what? The whole lump. A little bad, a little, look, a little bad, praise God, will end up creating more bad. And more bad will be will, will eventually become consuming of my life. That's what sin does. Praise God. A little sin becomes more sin. Unchecked. And more sin, now the end of sin is what? Death. Yeah. It consumes us. Praise God. Whether you believe it or not. When you start moving in one direction that is not according to the scriptures, it makes it so much easier to move in another direction according not to the scriptures. Jesus said, I'd rather you be what? Hot or cold? Praise God. Be holy or what? Unholy. Amen. Because it is, praise God, it grows and it festers and it manifests. If you're holy, be holy still. Amen. If you're unholy, stay that way. Make a decision what you're going to do. He told us, choose ye this day who you're going to serve. Amen? Praise God. Watch this. So, 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 so deception is waiting. And if I am unrighteous and I think what I'm doing is okay. So it's just, you know, I hate to use an example, but it is so true. You know, when someone gets a hold of substances, they say they try one substance, right? Right. And guess what? They call certain substances that are drugs, they call them what? Gateways, don't they? Mm -hmm. They call them gateway substances. That means you start off with a little something, but next thing you know, you're trying something a little more addictive, a little more stronger, a little more. But guess what? You never would have got to the stronger one if you never would have dibbled and dabbled in the other one. That's, that's, that's the operation, and that is the tactic of the adversary. Mm. Praise God. Amen. He don't want you always, praise God, to get way off. He just wants you to get a little bit off and be do that consistently. Right. Because one thing he understands, he understands the nature of people. And you got to understand the nature of who you are. Yes. Amen. If you don't understand your nature, the enemy already got you. Praise him. Eat who's that? Who's who, who's that that wanted hamburgers and they'll pay you on Tuesday? Wimpy? Yeah. I never saw where Wimpy paid for any hamburgers. Yeah. He always wanted what? Another. And guess what? One just never was enough. Praise him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, Go ahead. Praise, praise. Um, you know, it's also the same way when when we talk, you know, you just said about the devil and how he doesn't he doesn't care about certain things. It's the same. Uh, principle when it comes to your Bible. The truth of the matter is, you don't even care if you read the Bible, as long as you don't apply it to your life. Amen. And that's when it starts to change you. You know, when you when you apply the word to your life. But him just you just having the Bible, you have to be able to do something with it. That's oh, right. Amen. So so and it's so true. Just because you got the information, you got to use the information. Amen. Amen. So I like this. I like this statement. I got this from a Bible scholar that I wanted to share with you, but it's not my words. He says the only thing you'll gain. From cheating your brother is he is eternity with the unrighteous. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. and Paul was saying our beliefs are not separate from our actions. Mm -hmm. If a Christian can cheat and defraud his brother without consciousness, uh, conscious, it may be fairly asked if he is a Christian at all. At mm all. -hmm. Amen. And this is this is this is this is a strong statement, but it is true. Because church, let me say something. Let me tell you something. Guess what? Your soul is too valuable to mess over. Amen. Eternity is too long to go to the wrong place. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's too long. We live on this earth by the grace of God 70 years. Amen. If by strength, we'll make it 80. Praise the Lord. 
And the way people are living today, some not even making it to 20. Right. And whatever we do during those years on this planet determines where we spend eternity. It doesn't even seem fair, does it? How can 70 or 80 years of, 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 of eternity dictate and demand repayment for where I'm going to spend the rest of the ages. Doesn't seem fair, does it? But guess what? That is what God has put in place for us to determine where we're going to be for eternity. Amen. 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 And when you look at it like that, some of the things we're going after, some of the things that we call important, some of the things, praise God, that we make priority, they're really not important. They're really not a priority. Amen. They're really not worth me losing my soul. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, 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 so that is what we're here to do. Amen. Look at these things that, that, that may cost us eternity. All right. Y'all ready to go down the list? All right. I'm going to go back up to here. Uh, Murray, let's go back there real quick. Let's just read the scripture one more time. Uh, where are we at? I'm going to go back there. Uh, uh, praise him. Right here. It says what? It says that it says that uh, um, who shall out inherit the kingdom of God? He says what? Fornicators, right? Yeah. Idolaters, adulterers, infeminate, abusers of themselves and mankind. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to go down these first four or five. We may make it to those tonight. Let's take a look at this. Let's look at fornicators real quick. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at what these words mean. Praise God, according to what Paul is saying to the church. All right. So the first one is, he says, uh, and neither do fornicators. All right. Let's get there. Is that it right there? Praise God. All right. He says, watch this. Now, it's interesting. This is very interesting to me. Fornicator. Fornicator comes from the Greek word pornos. That's where we get the word pornography from. Amen. Fornicators. Fornicator is one who prostitutes their body uh, for another, another's lust for hire. One who indulges, who indulges in unlawful sexual incourse. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, watch this. This word here, oh, Jesus. This word here is an interesting word because every time this word 4205 is used in the scriptures, it deals with using your body by uh, receiving or giving some type of pain. Praise him. So, Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying that if you are a fornicator during this time, you would either give money or you would receive money during the act, this illicit act of some type of sexual activity. The expanded version, or the more the expanded version of this word is, is not just receiving payment or giving payment, but the expanded word is that it, it's allocating your resources to do this. Uh-oh. What does that mean, Pastor? That's what he's talking about. Paul is, uh, is letting us know when he uses this word about fornicating. He's letting us know, praise God, uh, when you, how it's like today, when you take your credit card and you put your credit card number and you buy the Playboy channel. Okay. You're a fornicator. When you take the, God, the resources that God has given you and you dedicate a certain amount of money, a certain amount of time, a certain amount of resources, what you have to go get what you want. Watch this. Before you take your car that God has and you drive the car, you put get you pay for gas in the car. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Get tight now with that. You put gas in the car so you can go over their house. Okay. Lord have help. We don't think about it like that, do we? But it's the truth. Fornication means that it always requires some type of payment to be made. And I'm asking you, church, amen, is it worth your soul over what you're striving to obtain? Now, remember, during the culture when Paul was writing this, amen, this was something that was proliferous in the area. And Paul was trying to let the people know at the church, you got to cut this stuff out. 
One, for one, guess what? When you become, uh, when you have direct contact with somebody, the Bible says, uh, therefore shall man leave his mother and father and cleave to his own wife, and the, and the two shall be how many fleshes? One. But, but you become one with that individual. And guess why this? People don't like to look at it like this, but it's so true. And let's say that person is with four, five, 10, 20 other people before they get with you. Not only are you one with them, you're one with all them other people too. Uh -huh. And whatever they brought to the to the table, so to speak, guess what? They serve it up to you when you go over and eat at that table. Okay. Praise him. We don't look at it like that, but that is what is happening. And Paul is letting them know, praise God, these things, praise God, are going to cause you not to inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if we have these things in our lives, guess what? We need to move these things out of our lives. Remember? But some were such to you, right? That's what Paul said, right? Okay. Amen. I want, I want us to understand, church, that we have to think about sin in more broader senses than the small little categories that we put it in. Amen? We put sin in a category and we don't want to deal with, oh, we got it, Lord. And the Lord is trying to help us understand that, 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 that you already done something before you even did something. We'll get to that when we get to adultery. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. Let's get two scripture tests. Let's give you a couple of scriptures here. He says here, uh, but now I have written unto you, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 5, but now I've written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, uh-oh. Now remember, Paul's right to the church, isn't he? Call it a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater. We'll get the rest of them in a minute. Or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, which such one know not to eat. Don't go out with them. Come on. Don't go to their house. Come on. Don't invite them to your house. This is if you have bona fide proof. This is what they're doing. Some people operate on hearsay, and you don't know. You say, well, I just think, no, guess what? If you have bona fide proof, because guess what? We're supposed to give the benefit of the doubt to our brother. We're supposed to say, my brother definitely, surely must not be doing this. Because he's supposed to be in Christ like I am. Too many times we as saints, we don't give people the benefit of the doubt. We're all ready to crucify them. What's that one show? We want to be drug, judge, uh, uh, attorney, the judge, and execution. Yeah, I know. I know. You don't know nothing. Were you there? You know, the interesting story that Jesus tells, the woman was caught in what? The Bible said, the Bible said, Lord have mercy, said the woman was caught in the very act of adultery. That's what it said, right? Praise him. They had bona fide proof of what she was doing. Praise him. All right. But look, don't eat with them until they get themselves what? Straightened out. Amen. Look what he says. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Esau was a fornicator? Yes, because Esau did what? He paid. He, he lost his what? His birthright. He got paid. He received payment for his birthright, didn't he? What was the payment of the birthright? A, 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 a bowl of beans. <laughs> a bowl of beans. For one morsel of meat, he sold his birthright. Do y'all see where there's an exchange or a payment taking place right. when I talk about foreign case? Amen? That makes sense? I never understood this until I was like, oh, he saw violated what God had put in place. Because really, you're not supposed to sell your birthright, because it is of God that you're born first. And when you're born first, the birthright goes to who? The firstborn. The reason why you're firstborn, because that's what God wanted. And guess what you did? You just fornicated what God gave. You made a payment, praise God, to, to usually, amen, uh, either push something or do something that's going to satisfy your flesh. Amen. Praise God. We're going to keep on going. But this will what? Keep you what, church? Out of heaven. Out of heaven. Can we say amen? 
All right, y'all ready for the next one? Y'all okay tonight? Y'all okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord. See, this is what y'all thought we were going to do last week. But this is what we're doing this week. <coughs> last week, we had, first of all, now Paul is talking to church, to the saints. All right, let's go on here uh, to, uh, what's the next one here? Idolaters. All right, idolaters. Praise God. All right, this word comes from the Greek word, 34, 32. Praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Hold on. Is that where we at? Idolaters? Did I have idolaters? Am I am I idolaters? Yeah. I skipped one, didn't I? No, it went wrong. Okay, I got it. I got it. I'm on, I'm, I had to find I had to catch up. I had to I went too far down. Idolaters. All right. So now idolaters uh comes from the Greek word um uh, eldiotanes 1496. That means that you worshiper. The key concern or concept of worshiping means that you bow down or you submit yourself to something. Praise God. So you bow down, submit yourself to false gods. All right? Watch this. We're going to expand this, this word called idolatry. Our idol, idolaters. A Christian participating in any way or any activity that is non-godly. That's what the true definition is. Anything that does not pertain to what? The Lord. And consuming the sacrificial elements of that thing are eating the remains of, of things offered to the item. All right? Now, don't y'all get scared now because, you know, some of y'all going to the Super Bowl this weekend. I'm not talking about the Super Bowl. I'm only talking about the Super Bowl is if you make the Super Bowl more important than God. Amen. You are the focal point of idolatry, not the idol. Let me say that again. Because see, people think it's the idol and not them. It's you. It ain't the idol. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you something here uh, in a moment. That says that. Okay. He says here, a covenant man as a worshiper of mammon. So idolaters are ones who bow down, submit themselves to false gods. They are Christians who participate in ungodly activity. Praise God. And then you reap the harvest and consume. Uh, those activities. And so there's, there's there's an element of consumption that comes with idolatry. I got to consume the idol. I have to consume. I have to consume. I, I'm going to say it again. I have to consume it because I am a consumer. Amen. How do I consume? I consume through my five senses. I taste, right? I touch. I bring in my eye gate. I see. I hear and I smell. I am a consumer. I got to be cautious, so cautious, church, of the things that I am consuming. Amen. Then a covenant man, someone who worships money over Amen. God. These will shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you say, Pastor, it's not the idol, but it's the person. Watch this. Let's go look at the scripture text. Can we do that? All right. Look, first of all, this is how God feels about idols. Y'all got Ezekiel chapter 6? They got it on the screen, D. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 6 and verse 5. <clears throat> says, and I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their eyes. And I will scatter their bones round about their eyes. Their all about their about your altars. What does that say about how God feels about idols and idol worship? You know what it says? You dead wrong. Is that what it says? That's how I should read Ezekiel 6 or 5. Look, if you are idol worshiping, you dead wrong doing something. It will cost you your what? Your life and your soul. Now, here in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 6, Pastor, that's Old Testament. I know, but look what he says. He says, I will lay the dead of the carcasses of the children of who? Israel. Of Israel. The Bible says that the children of Israel was the church of the Old Testament. So he's still talking to church folk. Amen. 
that church folk who, who participate in idols, praise God, and he says, I'm going to scatter their bones at the corner and the base of the thing. Oh, you want to worship that thing so bad? Guess what? You're going to worship it dead. It's going to take you out. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse number one. One passage of scripture I just pulled out, but it says something here. It says, now let's, let's read it nice and slow. I'm going to read it once and let's read it slow. It says, ye shall, let's read it together. Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land and to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Now, that's also personal, though. He says, you, you, me, me, I shall not make, ye shall not make who? You, me, I cannot make an idol. So the idol is only given strength when the person gives it to it. So idolatry is not in the inanimate image. Idolatry is in your heart. Projected it onto the image. Amen. It's in your heart. He says, neither shall who? Neither, so don't do, don't make what? You don't make no graven image. Don't stand up something before you to kneel down to. That's right. Damn. Neither shall you set up set up a stone. No stone. I'm the Lord. Or any in or and ye shall not set up any image of stone. Here in Leviticus chapter 26, he's talking to the children of Israel. Praise God, and he's letting them know idolatry begins where? In the heart. In the heart. It's only manifested <laughs> when it comes out. Now the now I heard someone say, Aaron, yes. You remember when the children of Israel were, were in the wilderness, right? Yeah. Moses goes up to the mountain. Guess what? Those people just came out of Egypt, didn't they? Yeah. Egypt was still in them, wasn't it? What you saw at the base of the mountain was God trying to move them to a new place from there. But when stress occurred, when Moses didn't show up, when anxiety stepped in, they went right back to where they were, where they came from. Right. They built a golden calf. A golden calf was one of the gods of Egypt. And when you talk, when God, when Moses talks to Aaron. <laughs> the air, where they come from? He said, I don't know. This got to go. It just showed up. <laughs> you know, I just showed up because it was what? In their heart. In them. And church of the living God. You have to know what's in you. Because whatever's in you will come out. Jesus said it like this It's not what goes in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of a man that defiles him. Praise him. So when you start cussing, mm. don't look at don't look at the situation. Cussing was in you. Mm -hmm. Lord, oh, oh, I ain't gonna get no thumbs up tonight, D, but it's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Praise him. Uh, we're gonna get the brawlers and fighters a little bit later. You always ready to fight. Mm. I'm gonna yeah. deal with you here. The, the scripture's gonna deal with you here in a minute. And we get to it, and we get to it tonight. Praise him. But look, church, this this deals with being deceived, unrighteous, deception. And he's saying that if I allow, that's why I got a righteous and deceived at the top. If I allow myself to stay deceived and not know the word of God, guess what? I'll fall right into this. And think what I'm doing is what? Okay. God understands. He knows I'm human. He knows I'm fleshly. He knows um uh uh, uh you know. Praise the Lord. He, he got, got, yeah, God knows right here because you probably never knew this was even in Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 5, bitch. Mm. This is how God, this is God's opinion of how he really feels about idol worship. Grace is sufficient, but there are times when God really expresses how he feels about situations in the Bible. And it's in, in our best interest to find out exactly how God really feels about situations. Amen? And I believe that's what scripture shows us how he really feels. All right, that's idols. We're going to keep on going. I'm going to try to get through as many of these as I can. Oh, now we are adulterers, right? Is that where we at, D? Yes. Yes. All right. Now, third thing on Paul's list. This is a tough list, ain't it? 
This is tougher than Galatians chapter 5, isn't it? Amen. I'm going to get there, but we're going to talk about this list right here. <laughs> All right, adulterers comes from this word called uh, myochos. Is one in a marriage that has mental thoughts. Uh, uh, uh. We haven't got to the act yet. You thinking about. <laughs> mental thoughts are physical actions of direct contact with one that is not your spouse. Mm. One who is faithless towards God. These are covenant breakers. When the man and a woman stands before God, they stand in covenant with one another. That they're not going to, they're going to have in the whole what? Until what? Death do us part. What? So help us the Lord. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, it's okay, praise the Lord. Amen. Because people stand up here at the altar and they don't believe, amen, what they say. And don't think God's going to hold them accountable for what they say. God will hold you accountable. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that you're going to be held accountable for every deed done in his body and every word that's spoken out of your mouth. Praise him. That's why I love the scripture talk about study, to be quiet. Because if I can't say it, if I don't say it, guess what? God can't bring me in judgment about it. Some things, some things we just need to shut our mouths about. Amen. Praise him. But this adultery or adulterers deal with covenant breakers. Do you not know that God sees us as being married to him? Amen. You find that in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 20, where the bride and the bridegroom does what? Come together. And the marriage of the Lamb and the church comes together. So God sees us, amen, as him being, the, the we are the bride and he is the bridegroom. Praise God. But it goes beyond just physical activities. So remember I said, I said what? Mental thoughts. All right. Let's look at the scripture. Let's look at the scripture. All right. Matthew chapter five. This thing, some, this will keep you out of heaven, church. But I say unto you that whosoever, you know, he's talking to men, and you know, and that day might be talking to women too. Look what he says. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. You ain't never have to be physically engaged with somebody <laughs> to fall into the category of being an adulterer in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. So what do I do, Pastor? Is she nice looking? Absolutely. Praise God. Does she smell good? I'm going to talk from a man's perspective. Does she look good, smell good? Absolutely. Guess what? At that point, I got to stop. Amen. She's nice. I got to go and do something else. Because if I dwell on it, mm. my mind starts my undressing her. Mm -hmm. And we know that ain't leading to nothing good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Two oops and bubbles back. Now you messed up. Amen. Amen, church. We got to get a hold of, we, we got to watch this. We got to draw some boundaries in our thoughts. Amen. And that's what God's telling us. You can only go what? So far. At one point, guess what? You end up doing what? Crossing the line. But I ain't been, I ain't been down to a house. I ain't done uh, uh, But every time you think about, you thinking about, can I say that? It's okay if I say that. Y'all don't talk about it. Oh, you know. Praise God. You know, we got children watching. Amen. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. So I got to check my what? Amen. What I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. And no, guess what? I can only go what? So far. I see a question. Go ahead. Comment. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just maybe just expound just a little bit more. I know you just said um, that we, you know, when you do that, we break that covenant with God. Right. So we have to understand that the adultery, the adulterer, the definition about not pleasing God is totally different than what the law says today about what an adulterer is. So we have to understand that. We're talking to the saints that 
that the law might say one thing in the court of law to say, well, in order to be considered an adulterer, you have to only do X, Y, and Z. But we have to look beyond that and say what God says, because I might be in that bucket and not be paying attention to what the word of God says versus what the law says. Yeah, thank you, sir. Because guess what, church? When we get to heaven, are we going to be judged by the laws of this land or judged by the laws of God? Laws of God. So we need, to, we need to know what the laws of God are. Amen. Amen. And I hope this is helping somebody. He said, look at Ezekiel. Here's Ezekiel again, 23, 37. That they have committed adultery. He's talking to about Israel. Look, and blood is in their hands. And how have they committed adultery? They committed with what? With their what? With their idols. They have worshiped and, and stopped worshiping me. What's the very first commandment God gave to Moses? Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. And church, I'm going to share something with you. Listen. Right now, social media, the internet, this we live in what they call what the information age, don't we? Right. Now we got AI. It's gonna start making up information. <laughs> we live in this information age. And guess what? All this information is competing for your attention. Right. Amen. Amen. And guess what? And today, I don't have to set up a stone. I don't, have to, I don't have to look at a tree. Sometimes ideology, Amen. thought processing, sets of information that causes me to react can become idols in my life. Amen. 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 He says right here, uh, have committed adultery and have caused now what? Because they did this, they've called their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass them through the fire and to vow them. What they were doing was, the Bible was talking about, they were, they were doing human sacrifices. <laughs> they, were, they, they were causing their sons and daughters to be sacrificed unto idol God. Mm -hmm. And God never intended that. Right. If he would have intended that, he would have let um, uh, Abraham go through with what he's going to do with, um, with Isaac. Right? Yeah. yeah. Or guess what? He would have never uh, uh, made animal skins for Adam and Eve and use an animal to shed blood. He only had one human sacrifice ever on his mind. And his name was Jesus Christ. Amen. For us to get out of sin, not to create more sin. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And what happens is uh, we fall into this, this thing called idolatry because we set up and when we set up things, it causes us to disgruntle God. And we end up, watch this, and sometimes our idols, we don't pay the price for our idols, wow. but our children do. Children, yeah. Our children pay the price for the things I'm stuck on. <coughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm trying to keep I'm, look, I'm trying to get y'all in heaven. I'm trying to try and help us make the heaven church. Because I said hell is too hot and it's too long for me to miss. Amen. All right. Let's go to the next one. I may get to one more tonight. I'm gonna because I think I think y'all had enough, but I'm gonna keep on talking. Infinity. All right. Infinity talks about uh Malchios. Soft, soft to the touch. That's the true word of what effeminate means. But it's meaning in context, amen, to being a man. Mm, come on. This is what it's talking about. Have you ever heard of the word academite? Academite, effeminate, was a boy kept for homosexual relationships with a man. So when you talk about effeminate, it talks about keeping. Young boys, soft and tender. Oh, Jesus. This sounds disgusting. So that they can be engaged in direct contact with adult men. Paul was saying in the Bible, it's in your Bible. Paul deals with pedophiles in the Bible. He would say, ain't nothing in the Bible. The next few, I hope y'all sit down and got a seatbelt on because Paul deals with it. 
a male who submits his body to unnatural lewdness. That's in feminine. Paul was saying, if these is something that you're doing, you're, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is the Bible. This is the Greek term for it. I can't get no more Bible than this. Because the Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek by the authors who wrote it. Somebody say amen. It's okay, y'all. I mean, and, and guess what? We have to talk about it. Praise God. People may choose to do whatever they want to do. But guess what? God's word is not going to change. Paul deals with it. All right. Y'all ready? Let's look at the scripture text. Romans 1 and 27. See, I'm going to go one more and then I'm going to be done tonight. He says, look. Uh. And they likewise also the man, men leaving the natural use of the woman. We already know as a man, a man, praise the Lord, and a woman, watch this, complement one another. Can we say amen? That's all, all I'm going to say. But when you use something as a substitute, for the things that are supposed to complement one another, he says right here that they burned in what? Their own lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is what? Unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, of their what? Remember, we talk about being deceived, right? Going the wrong way, being deceived, which was what? Meat unto them. So here Paul is letting them know in the book of Romans, because Romans was close to Corinth, that when you engage in this type of behavior, amen, you are working things that are unseemly, and then guess what? The Lord is going to reward you according to your actions. How he's going to reward you, I don't know. But guess what? God knows, and God will deal with you in that area. Amen. And guess what, church? Guess what? This right here now is contrary to the laws of our land. Hello? Hello? We, are we in the church? Amen. Amen. This is contrary to the laws of our land. So now, guess what? Now we got to what? We got to decide, are we going to go with the word of God or go with what is legal in our, in our country? Mm. So it puts people who are believers in very awkward positions. Because, you know what, we want to love everybody. But the Bible tells us something different than what has become the law of the land. Mm -hmm. And we have to pray and ask God to give us strength, church. And teach us how are we supposed to love the soul but hate the sin. Mm -hmm. You got to love the soul or hate the sin. You got to love the soul and hate the behavior. Amen. I'm not look, I love you, but I'm not signing off on that. You're my brother. You're my sister. Watch this. You're my brother in Christ. Uh-oh. Oh. You're my sister in Christ. But I can't get with that. Right. Because the Bible says, no matter what it what how legal it is in the country, and how what, what this world does. One more. Say, that's all we'll do. Our time is up. Abusers of mankind. Last one on the list for tonight. Expendable. Things that what? Keep, they shall not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Abusers of themselves. Once again, Greek 733, arson, KOTs, one who lies with a male as a female, a sodomite, a homosexual, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I was interested in this word because when you look at this word, 730, the definition of the word, the definition of the word is, is sodomite and homosexual. I'm like, how, how do you use that to define a word? That's what the word means. And according to what Paul writes to the church, that if you are in this category, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, let's look at what God's opinion is. Let's go to someplace very familiar. I'm going down the south. Can we go down the south real quick? 
Abusers of themselves, scriptural reference. Genesis 18. Now watch this. This is Genesis chapter 18, right? All right. In Genesis chapter 3, man is deceived by who? The serpent, right? By the time we get to Genesis chapter 6, God's destroying the whole earth. You only have to the sixth chapter already of the book, of the whole book, of the whole book. You to the sixth chapter of the first book. There are, there are 66 books in the Bible. You only get to the sixth chapter of the first book, and God's already killing all men off. That should tell us something about how corrosive, how viral, how aggressive sin is. But we act like sin ain't nothing. If the preacher gets up and preach about it, I ain't going there tomorrow, next Sunday. I'm turning my uh, membership over there. Amen. Amen. But sin is what's going to keep us out of heaven. God saw Lamar, so now we're up to the 18th chapter. And he's all ready to wipe somebody else off. And the Lord said, now watch this. This is the proliferation of sin. Because see, one thing I want you to understand, the, the, the flood didn't kill sin. Sin was still in the earth. If sin was not still in the earth, this would have never occurred. He wants up the flood. Yeah, the flood wiped out everybody, but guess what? It didn't get rid of that sin nature. These particular people who were in Sodom were descendants of those who came off the boat. Twelve chapters before this. These Sodomites were sons of Noah's yeah. descendants. So that tells us God saved man, but he had a plan to save man from their sin later on. But guess what? Sin crept in, and now you've got Sodom, and he says, look, and Sodom shows up at a place, where, and, and he says that, and because of what was been very grievous, their, their sin mm. was very grievous. It was not, it was their actions and their mindsets that sin was causing them to do. So when God saw that abusers of themselves, the word definition we just read in the New Testament was Sodomite. So what happened to Sodom? Sodom, verse 19, chapter 19, and verse 24. Then the Lord did what? Rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Praise him. Sound like they didn't make it to the kingdom of God. Judgment came upon them because of their sin. And we look back at the word that Paul just dealt with. He was talking about the same thing. Judgment is going to come upon them. I don't have, I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. I don't have no way to judge you. All I can do is tell you what the Bible says, and you got to make some decisions in your life. Amen. Amen? Praise God. I'm going to stop right here tonight because, you know, Jesus, help us, because he shifts gears here, and we're going to talk about this next week. People who be still. <laughs> I'm just not talking about people who take them to belong to them. I'm talking about people who steal the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we'll talk about that next week. Somebody clap your hands give God some praise. Amen. Church, I want us to understand something tonight. Is that if you, if any of these touch your life, any of these touch your life, eject them from your life. Make sure that you have the power of God in your life to be baptized in Jesus' name, be full of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord will help you make a change in your life. Amen. And that's why I want to let you know, and that's why I want to put that last scripture on. He said, and and some were some of this was you. But we've been washed by God. We've been washed by the blood of Christ. You don't have to stay in these situations. Somebody say, praise the, praise the Lord. And so as we conclude tonight, I just want to encourage you that we're going to uh, come back to this next week if God gives us the strength to do so. But we really want to know what are the things that are going to keep us out of heaven. Amen? Amen? And these things right here, Paul is dealing with the church of Corinth so that we, they can be aware, that they can be concerned, they have these lifestyles are being changed so that they can see the Lord's face in peace. Amen. All right. We're going to uh, give God praise. Come on, clap your hands. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So on tonight, uh, I think it has up there. Uh, yes. Praise God. We, we appreciate everyone 
amen, who was, and who was partaking, amen, in the vision of growing the kingdom of God. Amen. When you give, guess what? You partake in the, in the growing of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm asking everyone who wants to partake in the growing of the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, feel free to give because that's what we're doing. We are we are moving, pushing, pressing forward the kingdom of God in this earth. Amen. So that's what your funds and your finances are going to do. And I invite you to participate with us tonight. Amen. Amen. By $5 donation, a $10 donation, do as the Lord leads you. But know that this is good ground and the Lord's going to bless you, amen, and reward you for your sacrifice. Amen? amen? All right. We thank God for you being out tonight. Amen. Thank God for you being on tonight. Hope something was said to stir up our hearts and minds and spirits that we can be able uh, to make sure that we are a prepared people for a prepared place. Amen? amen. All right. God bless you. I want to pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. I ask the Lord that you bless those with us online. Continue to keep them by your grace divine. And we just speak strength. Oh, God, we speak courage. We speak abundance of your grace in their lives. Continue, God, to help us. God, to analyze our lives and see if anything that's not like you, help us to remove it out of our life so that we can make it to that prepared place called heaven, the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. If you have a natural offering, Dean Gould standing up here. If you have one, hallelujah. If not, we're going to go ahead and dismiss. Thank you for coming out tonight. Bible class, praise the Lord. Just really quick way of announcements. I do want to let you know that on Sunday afternoon around 530, for those who are who want to, we'll be here. We're going to watch the game here at the church. Amen. Bring something. I meant to mention that on the call, and I forgot to do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, I believe that uh, we'll be sending out a quick notice. If you choose to do that, Advantage Law is the one that has the list of what we're supposed to bring. I'm supposed to bring drinks. That's what I'm going to do. Amen. And we'll just be here for those who want to come out and fellowship at that time and watch the game on Sunday night. Feel free, amen, to come on. Amen. amen. Come on and be a part. Amen. We'll be in the <laughs> fellowship hall here, and we're just going to have a time of fellowship and food. And time to enjoy one another's fellowship. Amen? Amen. All right. If there's not anything else, we're going to stand. Remember, govern yourself according to all the other announcements. The food pantry's coming up quickly. Once again, amen. Let's pray for those. Remember Sister Jennifer and Brother Ruben's grandmother. Uh, she passed away on this particular week. The services will be uh, forthcoming. So let's remember. Uh, uh, the Reynoso family, amen. amen. Remember, um, uh, Sister Jennifer, what's this Jennifer's last name? Reynoso, amen. Also, Jennifer Reynoso family there in uh, Alfonso. New York, Alfonso. amen. What Alfonso. the Alfonso, Alfonso family, thank you. Remember the Alfonso family, and that is that is actually uh, Sister Jennifer's mother, Melita. That was her mother, amen. Praise God. So, remember her also in Jesus' name, all right. Church, we're going to make it to heaven, aren't we? Amen. I'm trying to make it in. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your word that's come forth, God. Help us, oh God, to shed and to get rid of these things that are not like you, that we can walk boldly, oh God, into the kingdom of God. That's what you bless and keep us and we go back home, oh God. Let us depart from this place, but not from your presence, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Look at somebody, tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. That was such a good talk about it.